she's purple. Time to start cutting. Hey, welcome back. Hello. What are you doing? Well, I want to I want to make myself feel useful around here because I've been gone so much. Uh-huh. And I keep looking at this pipe that you pulled out of the ground with concrete on it and I taking it as a personal challenge that I want to pound the concrete off this pipe. Good luck. Okay. I'll get some ibuprofen ready. Well, shoot. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. And that's how the cookie crumbles. Well, Ellie, you're up next. Start cleaning that up. We're going to cut two alfalfa fields today. Just looking under here, and I can see this pulley does have a little bit of play in it so we'll have to watch that especially with all this ready to burn stover right around it probably get that ordered get it coming <clears throat> Starting with Uncle Jeff's alfalfa here. As you can assume, we're not gonna get many bales off this, but we've had some really nice recent rains, and we're thinking once we cut all these flowers off and it starts regrowing, we might have a pretty decent third cutting. It could potentially be better than our first cutting, especially if we get a couple more rains. That would be really cool. So, you know, once this stuff flowers, it pretty much quits growing vegetatively and cut short of 100 acres today. Grasshoppers are crazy. Reminds me of that show I used to watch when I was a kid called Kung Fu. Monk always called Kane Grasshopper when he was teaching teaching some stuff as he was growing up. Okay. So and that's got what to do with our alfalfa? That's a grasshopper. Oh, okay. It reminds me of grasshopper. I was thinking about maybe starting to call you Weed Huffa. Young Weed Huffa. You can delete that if you want. Yeah. The song of the day, however, is by the Cranberries. I'm a big Cranberries fan. I miss Dolores. She's a heck of a singer. Um, is Dreams. So that's three songs by them. Dad's going to do this field so I don't sit in that thing all day.
While Dad's working on that field, I'm gonna load the little sprayer up on my four wheeler. Take care of some thistles. People been asking. <clears throat> People been asking what we spray in our pastures. We use graze on P and D. It's labeled for spraying out there where cattle are. It's quite literally in the name, graze on, continue to graze. Then there's those two people. How can you spray those chemicals where there's cattle? I'm spraying thistles. If the cattle ate the thistles, I wouldn't have to spray them. So I ain't worried about it. Here's what they look like after they've been sprayed for about a month. That thing ain't coming back. He's toasty. Hello, cows. So once you see purple, it's already too late. Even if you spray it, it's gonna go to seed. And this one, we've part of it's gone to seed already, we can see. When I first started doing this, Dad always sent me out with a machete. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Nice to have around a little bit. Sometimes I like to shape them into things, you know, statues or... You give me about five minutes, I can make a nice elephant. I'd show you, but I don't have time today. Dad's just pulling in. I'm gonna get a quick early lunch before I go. But hey, look at this meat stick. That is huge. Usually you only see them that big on TV. You got some long meat sticks in there. Yep. How many bale you reckon there is out there? Nine. Hey, that'd be pretty good. I think we got 13 last time. Here we go. 70 acres, take about six hours. Let's we break something. Some of that schmeat stick stuck in my teeth. Look at them hop. That's why they call them hoppers. Or maybe it's because their name's grasshopper and hoppers in the name. Anyway, it's flowering. It's time to go. We're gonna cut it. One thing I do think about this cutting versus the last is it got a little bushier, kind of filled in between the rows better, but it's shorter. If we're lucky, we might get around the same amount. I doubt it. We do have some big kosha weeds coming, which will actually okay quality and they'll make a windrow, so. guy right here he's called a stink bug because he smells bad oh this is beautiful actually I'm pretty impressed folks I'm pretty impressed now this stuff in the slough is so thick I gotta cut just a partial header width look at that we got mud that's crazy actually got a wet tire but anyway I got to cut part of a header width because the, you know I got that windrow sucked up so much it wouldn't dry very well if I got a full header Couple inches of rain, some of them hard and fast, and once you know it, the low spots are wet. And that's why we're so excited about cutting today, because we think the regrowth is going to come fast. And it, it's not very often your third cutting of alfalfa is the best 
out of the three. But it just might happen this year if we keep getting a couple more mid-season rains. The corn in the field is tasseling, the some places short, you know, it's low spots, maybe six foot tall. It's gonna make silage, we're gonna have cattle feed, especially with dad buying all that hay. Pretty exciting stuff. getting close to half done uh, later today I promised my brother I'd help him out got to get the dump truck and the skid loader to the town kid once again and scoop up a little dirt haul a little gravel help him out Listening to the radio, they're talking about a 30% chance of rain tonight. You know, that's pretty small. Might get some sprinkles. Obviously, it's ideal you don't get cut hay rained on at all. But if it's going to get rained on, best case scenario is it's rained on in the first day you cut it. That rain can actually wash out some sugars. It reduces the feed value of it. So then you got to wait for it to dry again. And sometimes you then have to flip it a couple times, which knocks leaves off. The leaves are the important part. And I can tell you one thing, we're not gonna complain about a rain. Stretch out the legs a little. See if this bearing's getting hot. Bowling. Doesn't seem any hotter than anything else. When they start going out, there's a lot more friction and they heat up. We have the stuff for auto steer. We just have to get the right mount for this. It costs like $110 and take about 20 minutes. And then my shoulder, my arm wouldn't hurt from white knuckling it the whole time, but I don't know. The time passes a lot faster when you gotta actually try. Thanks guys, tonight is my chance for scattered storms. Lows level off around 63. High temperatures reach up to 86. Tomorrow, a mix of clouds and sun. All of a sudden there's some big clouds and some darkness to the west. Wind is picked up. Might get a midday sprinkle or storm. A few rounds left. We'll be done in about 30 minutes. Hi cows. I'm sure they're loving the clouds. We've got one pass left, hasn't started sprinkling. It's kind of moving south. I think it's gonna miss us. Bring it on home. Oh, that's, oh. We're stripping. Someone got their pickup washed. Looks like dad was doing a little hay cutting of his own at home.
Oh. 60 mile an hour wind. That's what they're saying? Up by Miller. So the storm that was building nearby, it kind of disappeared, but there's one further away, about an hour. Apparently it's got some 60 mile an hour wind in it. One thing's for sure, with all these trips, we're going to my brother's place and helping him out. I'm gonna get some good work out of him when we start building our deck. You wanna see something crazy? It's the remnants of a meth lab. You think I'm kidding. Picking up this gravel in by wheelbarrow. Jake is bringing it to the backyard. Running out of traction. Day. We cut some hay. We helped the brother. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love to see you next time. Have a good one. People been asking. <laughs>